Come on and see about me. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I need him to come see about me. You, Hallelujah. And I'm all right like I know need him to come. Amen. Amen. Praise God, because I want him to know that he's welcome. Hallelujah. Because I need him. For it's in him that I live, move, and have my being. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We just appreciate God for who he is. Another opportunity to be in the house of God in our right mind. Praise God. Maybe some things happening in your body, but God allowed you to be here. Praise God. And that's enough in itself to give him thanks. Hallelujah. To bless his name. Amen. Praise God. I'm just excited to be in the house of God. We've got some that's out, not feeling well, first lady, but praise God, he's going to renew her strength as well. Hallelujah. Amen. I just get excited when I come to the house of God. Because in this day and time that we live, whether you recognize it or not, the enemy is busy and the world is constantly trying to push the Lord out of the picture and feel like they're running everything and controlling everything. And then we as a people, praise God, we're getting treated any kind of way, like we're not of no value. But I got news because we belong to the Lord. We are somebody in Christ. And God is going to raise us up when we as a folk walk according to his word to let the world know he is still in control and he still sits on the throne because the word tells us that the last shall be first they think they're gonna reign and stay on top but it ain't so hallelujah and i just say wait on the lord and while you're waiting on him make sure you keep him blessed praise his name and give him all the glory to let him know that he's your lord and savior Praise God. Everybody letting you know who they are. Why not let them know who you are? Praise God. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power to save and deliver. Hallelujah. We thank God. And those that are able, I welcome everyone that's here today, everyone that's online. Praise God. It's good to be back online. Praise God. And we appreciate you that you might receive this word. For the Lord can move right where you are if you just yield to him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Those that have your Bibles, uh, go with me back to the book of Ephesians. We've been dealing with that armor for the last couple of weeks. And we're getting ready to wrap it up on the armor. And we're going to talk about the sword of the spirit. But I'll read for you here in just a refresh. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, beginning at verse 10, and I'll be reading the New King James Version. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked one, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's what we're going to talk about this morning, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful, praise God, Let, uh, being watchful and supplications for the, all the saints and for me, 
the, uh, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought. Paul says while he was in chains, he asked the saints to pray for him while he was in prison, that he still might open his mouth and speak boldly. We not even in chains and don't want to open my mouth and speak boldly. <laughs> Praise God. Most people in chains would feel down and depressed, but he was still yet speaking the gospel while yet in prison. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for this opportunity to declare your word. Lord, we speak that your word will go forth unhindered and that the word will have its place and it will take root and bring forth the fruit that you desire. We declare that the enemy won't steal the word which is sin, but it will remain that it might glorify your name as we walk in obedience to that word, God, that the world and those outside of the family will see and know that you are still on the throne and that you are still the Savior that they've been searching in so many other places. But without you, Father, there is no hope. And we thank you that our hope lies in you and your word for you and your word they are one and we thank you for that right now in jesus name we just want to bless you and thank you and say have thine way do what you will as you will in the mighty name of jesus for it is so amen you may be seated amen and as i shared with you the topic for the day, praise God, we're going to talk about the sword of the spirit, which is the last piece of the armor that God is talking to us about the saints of putting in. But as we read in that passage of scripture there, the word is just reminding us to stand firm on the ground that Jesus has already gained. In other words, the work that he done on the Christ. That settled everything. And because of him going to the cross, dying for our sins, and then being raised up again, that gave us the victory because he took the keys of death and hell, death from uh, Satan, praise God. And therefore, he could no longer hold that over the saint's head. Amen. Amen. And the Lord says that because he shed his blood, it only had to be done once for his blood was pure and perfect. Praise God. And so when he shed his blood for us, then that gave us a right to the tree of life, salvation in the Lord when we place our trust in him. Amen. And so out of all the weapons and the peace that we put on, the sword of the spirit is our only offensive weapon that we have. The rest of it was for defense. But the sword of the spirit and I love it. It says that the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Do you get that? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's why you hear me say so many times, whatever is going on, go back to the word. Because if you go to the word, that sword of the spirit is used to defeat the enemy. And when we think of sword, you probably picture in your mind that long sword like you see in the movies and praise God. But sword in this particular passage of scripture is like a short dagger. Because what that saying is, the short dagger, that means you're in close combat. Close, close combat. That means when the enemy is up in your face. Yeah. Your situation is so tight that you don't know if you can turn left, right, because the enemy is right there. And you look like you ain't going to come out. But God says that if we take the sword of the spirit or take that dagger, praise God, that little short dagger, even though we're in combat, if we use the dagger, we'll be able to defeat the enemy. In other words, we ain't got to turn and run, but use the dagger to fight. And he says that the sword of the spirit was the word of God. So in other words, we've got to go back 
to the word. Now, let me help you out. This book in the Greek is called graphic, which means it's the book. Praise God. The written, the book itself, the written, the word in the book we refer to in the Greek as a logos. That's the actual written word. But when the enemy is hot on your track, we need rhema, which is the use of the word that's in the written book. We got to have the word that's in the written book. That's our only offensive weapon. And the offensive weapon is saying that is what we fight with. So if you think about a football team, you got the defense and you got the offense. The offense moves right on in because their goal is they trying to score. They're not worried about the defense other than they saying we got to get by the defense so we can get to the scoreboard. We got our data, which is the word of God. So we need a mindset that long as I got the word of God, I can cut through and fight. Praise God. And the word lets us know that this word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts between the bones and the marrow. The soul and the spirit. Praise God. That's how sharp the dagger is that you're using. Now you says it's so sharp it can cut between the soul and the spirit because we are made up in three parts. We've got a spirit, we've got a soul, and we've got a body. Our soul is the part where God resides and rests. Our spirit is our personality our emotions, and our mindset. Praise God. And then this physical body is the house that we carry the soul and the spirit in. And the Bible says that the sword is sharper and so sharp that it can cut between the spirit and the soul. The reason for that, and we were just told in this passage here, that the um, sword of the spirit is the word of God. So the reason is so important to go to the word of God because see the spirit is going to cut between the soul and the spirit. Because if you don't separate the two it's our personality our emotions our way of thinking gets in the way of the spirit. So that sword or that dagger has got to separate the two in order for the spirit to be able to do what it's got to do. Because see, in your soulish realm, your emotional makeup, your personality, all of that is a combination of your upbringing and your surroundings. This is what mama told me. This is what daddy told me. This is what grandmama told me. But I want you to understand, they may have told you certain things and they may have meant well about it, but if they did not tell you what the word of God was saying about the matter, that's going to be little or of no use to you when you're in spiritual warfare. When the devil is right at your nose looking you eye to eye trying to take you out, you got to have something that you can fight back with. And that's why God said, pull out the dagger, which is the word of God, because Satan can't stand the word of God. But now he don't have nothing saying what you're going to say. Well, now my opinion is I read the scripture. This is what I think about it. You think the devil care what you think about it? Not one bit what you think. What daddy said, what mama said, what grandmama said, granddaddy said, he don't care because if they gave you what they thought and not what the word said, it may have been good advice to let you get through, but it's not enough to cause you to overcome the enemy. Because Satan is going to move according to the word. That's why the Bible reminds us so much 
about is so important of what we are saying out of our mouths. Because if you are declaring the wrong thing, you're going to get the wrong result. That's right. That's right. Because the Bible says we can have what we say. That's right. And if you're saying the wrong thing, Satan is a legalist, and so he's going to hold that accountable, and he's going to tell the Lord, they say, and until you get your word right, God is not going to violate his word, because he and his word, they are one. In John, the first chapter, it says that he was a living word. Jesus was a living word. He came here and walked this earth as the living word, the son of God, but yet he walked part of his life out here as a man of God, in a sense. Because he needed to demonstrate that we can be in this earth, but yet still walk according to God's word to accomplish what the Father has for us to do. Because the Father sent him here, and it said that he was the living word. Now, let me let me help you out a little bit. If he was the living word and he used the word, then we got to use the word. Go back and think about it. When we look back in Genesis, praise God, when Satan came to Adam and Eve to tempt them, the first thing he said to them was, hath God not said? In other words, he was trying to get them to use the words that he needed them to use so that he could do. He was trying to twist what God had already commanded them and make them doubt what the word was saying. What does the enemy to do today? He whispers to your mind and he makes you think that what the word of God saying is not true. Because you begin to think about a scripture. And you say, well, I prayed that scripture and ain't nothing happened. You know what? You may have prayed the scripture. And you may have read the scripture. But guess what? In reality, you didn't believe the scripture. Because when you read the scripture, spoke the scripture, you still started acting on what your mind was telling you. Because you did not give the word time to penetrate, to get to the spirit man, so that it could separate and speak to the soulish realm and says, I know this is what I'm feeling. I know this is what I think, but this is what the word says. In other words, we didn't stop our way of thinking, or we didn't stop the advice that somebody was giving us to go back and compare it to the word of God. But the Bible tells us in Ephesians here that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. And he says that we need to take that sword out when we're in spiritual warfare. And the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. That's I-N-G, which means on an ongoing basis. You don't read it one time. You don't read it two times and it's there. You got to read it over and over and over and quote it over and over so that your spirit will receive it until it becomes real to you. Because see, it goes against everything that we've been raised up and taught to a certain degree that we got to think a certain way. We've got to act a certain way. We went to school and they taught us this and that. But a lot of that stuff that they taught us does not measure up with the word of God because it was not one of the textbooks. It was man's point of view or what they thought about different subjects and different areas. And that's how it was related to us as it was written in those textbooks. The teachers that taught, they were trained to teach according to what books were being used. But God says that us as a believer, this is the word and textbook that we need. 
The book itself in Greek is graphe. The written word is logos. Logos means I get the understanding of what the book, because logos is the message of the book. What is the book saying? But rhema is me using the message from the book to change my situation. So we need a rhema word when we're in spiritual warfare. Because that means we've got to use it. And rhema in the Greek is an utterance or a declaration. So when you get the rhema word from the graphe or the logos of your understanding of what this message is saying, now I need rhema. And in order for rhema to take place, I must utter what the book is saying. I got to declare what the book is saying. That's what it means in the Greek. And so sometimes when we just go with English, praise God, we think like the English language is written. But this was written in Greek, translated in English for our purposes. But when we go back and look at the Greek words that was used, because the same word in different passages can have a different meaning according to Greek. But when we read the same word, we apply the same meaning to every time we see that word. But the word means something different in a different passage, depending on what was going on at that time in the Greek. That's why God says, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, so that it can separate the soul from the spirit. In other words, get us out of our personality, out of our way of thinking, and let us think like the spirit of God is thinking and go back to the graphe, the book itself, get the logos, the understanding of the word, and then use rhema by declaring what God says. Now, I'm going to give you an example here. When Jesus, praise God, was led into the wilderness, everybody know the story. It says that he was led in the wilderness, and as he was going into the wilderness, Praise God. That's in the Matthew, the fourth chapter. Praise God. As he was going into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he got there, because he was going to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. As he was led into that wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. So he's getting hungry because he's walking this earth as a man. He yet still the son of God. But he won't operate in that role per se at the moment because he was going through the physical because he was preparing for what he was sent here to do. But he had to walk it out as an example. So he got hungry. Guess what? When he got hungry, Satan shows up. And he tells him, he says, now, if in, in verse 2 there it says, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, that, that if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. Jesus hungry. Satan shows up and says, oh, there's some stones down there. You say you're the son of God. All you got to do is speak to him and, and take, tell the stones to change from stone to bread so you can eat. Now, Jesus says it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, if Jesus, who was the living word, had to use the written word and open his mouth and remind Satan what the word says, then us who ain't written no word, how much more should we need to use the written word and declare it? We're not better than Jesus. We ain't even come close. As they say, close to a candlestick. We ain't even in the running. He spoke the word. He didn't go in no meeting. 
He didn't hold no conversation with Satan. He turned around and said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If Jesus said it's written, when the enemy is messing with us, don't you think that's why God says, pull out the sword of the spirit, which is the word? He is encouraging us to use the word to change our situation. So that didn't work. Then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, if you the son of God, why not? If you are the son of God, praise God. Let me get these glasses right here. He took him, the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written that he should give you angels charge over you. The devil reminding Jesus what the word said. And he telling him, if you go up to the top of the temple, throw yourself down or jump down. Your word says that the angels going to give you, give the angels have charge over you, so they're going to let you land on your feet. You ain't going to get hurt because you're the son of God. Then everybody going to know for real that you are the son of God because if you jump off the top of this pinnacle here, which was the top of the temple, and you land on your feet, they know you ain't Superman, Batman, so you got to be the son of God. You're going to be all right. And they'll know. But then it says, Jesus said unto him again, it is written, you should not tempt the Lord your God. And your Bible might say, you should not test the Lord thy God. But I want you to understand the slickness or the sneakiness of the enemy. Jesus been out there in that desert, in the wilderness, hungry. 40 days and 40 nights, he been fasting. And the enemy come to him trying to meet a legitimate need, but he was trying to do it in the wrong way. The enemy comes to us when we have a need in our lives. And he tries to get us to turn to every means except the word of God. Say, well, you know, they told you when you were in college, do this and do that. Or your teacher said, or your mama said, go this way. But if that stuff don't line up with the word of God, forget it. Jesus said, it is written. So, okay. Since that didn't work, the devil comes back again and says, this time he's going to take him up on a high, it says an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdom of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. And the devil left him. Behold, the angels came and ministered him. Every case, Jesus didn't waste no time arguing with the devil. He spoke and said, it is written and quoted the word of God. When we are in battle, spiritual warfare, the enemy is trying to take you out or put you down. We must use our dagger or our sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and fight the enemy with the word. Otherwise, he's not going to leave us alone. It's not just enough to have your Bible, come to church, hear a good sermon, and understand what the word is saying. And when you hear the word explained, you say, oh, that's what that means. And the light bulb comes on and you get it. That is a logos God exposed and opened up the word to you. See, the word is like an x-ray machine. Praise God, whatever is going on when the word is going forth, the word will put the light on the matter. And then it will register and say, oh, I see it, I see it.
But let me tell you something. That's not enough when the devil is in your face. It might be okay if he's out there, but when he's right up in your face and you at your last wit's end and you ain't got a clue which way to go, go back to the word of God, whip that dagger out because the enemy done got too close and start cutting him off with the word. And then you begin to quote and read that word and tell the devil, it is written, praise God. Then you're going to see the spirit of God, which is hovering over us as believers so that he can act on the word of God because the Bible tells us that God gives his angels charge of us but the angels only hearken at the word of God so they gotta have the word so that they can be released to begin to work on your behalf use the dagger the word of the God hallelujah the sword of the spirit which is the word and now the understanding got to become real to you. You now got to use your mouth to utter or declare what the word is saying. Jesus defeated the devil even though he had all power, had all knowledge. He still come back and said, it is written. He took him back to the word. And I can imagine when he was telling him to turn those stones, praise God, into bread. Jesus probably was reaching back in his bank, praise God, not that he forgot anything, but he thought about the children in the wilderness. They got hungry and didn't have nothing to eat. But when they called on the name of the Lord and began to let it be known that they needed food, God rained manna from heaven. Praise God because they opened up their mouth and began to declare the need. And they looked to the source in which that need should come from. Not what the devil was whispering to their mind. Because some of them in the wilderness, praise God, they was running around saying, Moses, you done got us out here to die with no water and no food. We should have stayed in Egypt instead of coming out with you. But those that did believe and when Moses praise God done as the Lord told him to do praise God and begin to declare the word God rained enough manna down to feed them praise God and he told them to get all that you need but don't get no more than what's necessary for the house because God says I'm going to supply that need on a daily basis you see we trying to work it out we trying to figure it out but God says I need you to learn how to walk by faith I need you to use the sword of the spirit I need you to trust me and know that me and my word we are one so if I said it in my word I'm going to perform what my word says but we as the saints of God has got to utter we got to use the rhema we got to declare that word and you see as you begin to declare that word the spirit man can receive that word and when the spirit sees it that's where the power kicks in praise God to make it happen on your behalf that's why God reminds us that the spirit of the word or that sword is sharper than any two-edged sword so that it can separate and get this soulless ram out of the way of the spirit so the spirit can do what it's supposed to do you see when the Lord began to step out and he wanted to form creation. What did he do? The word says he stepped out in the dark. Praise God. And he began to speak and said, let there be light. And it was so. But there was no light until he spoke it. He had to utter and declare that word. And when he spoke it, the light showed up. And so when we begin to declare the word of God, God lets the spirit begin to go to work because see as Jesus spoke the word the Bible tells us that the spirit of God was hovering in the air in other words the spirit of God was ready to go to work but the spirit couldn't go to work until the word was spoken you see
see, you got to understand something. If we don't speak that word, ain't nothing getting ready to happen. Praise God, because they are, the Spirit is waiting on the word of God. Because the Bible tells us that the word is spirit and life. In other words, that word is living. It is a lie. That word is able to do what God said it was going to do because he said that he was going to perform and watch over his word to do what his word says. But he needs us as a people of God to speak that word in faith. And when we speak that word, we need to walk like we know what we're talking about. You might not feel it, but the devil don't have to know it. Because when you open up your mouth and declare boldly, you begin to walk and look him right in the face and let that word be made known. And he has to back up because he's allergic to the word of God. Because he cannot overcome the word. But if you don't use the word, he will whip you every time. Praise God. Not only do you use the word on the devil, but you use it on his imps too. Praise God. Pull out that sword of the spirit and begin to work and let God do what he says he's going to do. So saints, it's time for us now to start and graduate over into the rhema word. A lot of us got the graphe, which is the book. You got our Bible in your car. You got one in the kitchen. You got one in the bedroom. One laying on the table. But just having the Bibles all over the house. Praise God ain't doing you no good if you're not using what's in the Bible. And now that you got all the Bibles, open it up and get the understanding. That's why when you come to the house of God and you hear the word of God, which the word is the x-ray machine it begins to let us see where we are in the word according to the Lord and when we begin to see ourselves praise God according to this word then we know that we've got to make a change and turn around and begin to say Lord I heard your word and I understand I thank you for showing and giving me understanding but then after I get the understanding I got to begin to go to the next level I got to begin to graduate and go into rank now this word is not just for my understanding, but after I get understanding, I got to put the word in practice. I got to use the word. So I use the word by speaking with my mouth. The Bible tells me that the tongue is as the pen of a ready writer. So when I begin to speak and declare, the spirit of God is waiting to hear the word. And when that word is spoken because I belong to the Lord. God can dispatch his angels, praise God, so that they can begin to go and open whatever doors that needs to be opened. They can begin to turn whatever heart needs to be turned because my Bible tells me that the word of God, praise God, that he can change the heart of a king. Just like the river is flowing and it's got a bend in it and the, the, the waves will turn and go this way according to the bends in the river. Praise God. When I speak the word of God, the spirit can begin to move. And, and where they told me no, they're now going to say yes because God has now changed the heart and have given me favor because he sees one of my own or one of his own praise God that has trusted in him and because we put our trust in him he's not going to let us go down praise God but we got to stand on that word in spite of the Bible says plainly here at the beginning of the armor stand firm in the word stand firm praise god that means stand on what god has already done you see you're not fighting for the victory you're fighting from victory because jesus had already won the victory for us so we've got the victory we just gotta walk in it and the way we gonna walk in it is declare that word and let it become rhema praise god and it becomes rhema when i can declare in the midst of my situation as the choir was singing 
the Lord will make a way somehow. Yes, he's going to make a way somehow. That's why I got to declare his word and quit trying to figure it out on my own. But I can say, Lord, it is written. And because it is written, I know your word ain't going back to your board, but your word going to accomplish what it was sent to do. Thanks, it's time to use the sword of the spirit, and that will get the devil up out of your face for a little while. Praise God, because see, as a people, sometimes when you have one victory, praise God, you feel like you can sit down and cross your leg because you feel like you're somebody because God brought you through that. But I want you to understand something that is not over just because you got through that one battle because the devil after a while is going to come back and try you again. And praise God. But what happens is when you come up out of that battle, you need to go ahead on and praise God even the more you need to tell this body I got some aches and I got some pain but nevertheless the Lord still got me here he still allowed my mind to be right so I'm going to praise his holy name I might can't get up and do the holy dance but I can wave my hand I can put that smile on my face I can speak a word to somebody and tell them it's going to be all right. I can tell them to put their trust in the Lord and I can tell them what the word of God says. In other words, I can do something because God got me here. I don't sit down and do nothing, but I understand from a rhema that I've got to declare that word. So I'm using what's written in the book. See, we got a lot of folk can tell you what the book's saying. They can quote it, tell you the verse, chapter, and the subverse. But they ain't walking it out. Because when trouble hit them, they panic like everybody else. All they know, they got the educated. They done been trained. Some of them got the doctor degrees and all of that. And I'm not knocking education because it's very good. And we need education. But education without use will do you no good. You got a bunch of folk in the natural with education and using a bit of it. Ain't even trying to use it. But they gladly and proudly tell you, I got my PhD. But a PhD with no use ain't helping you. But I don't want nobody to get it twisted. I'm not against education. Everybody should get as much education as they should be able to get. But don't put your trust totally in that education. That's all I'm saying. The Bible tells us to trust in the Lord. And if we're going to trust in him, that's his word because it says he and his word, they are one. He does not speak contrary to his word. So if I get his word and I declare his word, which is rhema, he's going to perform his word. But now the devil tries to get us to say, well, you know, you, you, you prayed about that. And how long it's been? Well, if it's been that long, you must have messed up somewhere and the Lord ain't done. He's punishing you. God is a God of eternity. We are a people of time. God will accomplish what he needs to accomplish in his time. Because our ways are not his. Our thoughts are not his. His is higher than ours. But when we understand God, from that eternity perspective, what we can do is declare what God says, praise him while it's working, but know that he's got us because we are not in this alone. The word reminds us that he told Jesus, told the father, he says, Lord, all of them that you have given to me, not one of them have I lost. But the devil make you feel like you done dripped off the jumped off the ship. God says, if you was his, 
you ain't lost. You might have sidetracked, but that GPS, which is the Holy Spirit speaking to you, telling you to get back on track. Because he says that he's faithful and just to forgive us for all unrighteousness and cleanse us. We ask for forgiveness and get right back in place and keep marching. Because, see, you don't learn until you begin to use to find out what you learn is working. And in the process, we're going to make some errors. But don't let the error stop. You ain't the first person that made an error. Ain't going to be the last. But the Lord is right there with us. We walk by faith and not by sight. It's not my job to figure out how God going to do it. My job is to know that he will do it because I went back to the graphe, opened it up, got understanding, and then I opened my mouth and spoke what he said concerning my situation. And if I spoke what he said concerning my situation, I turned the understanding into rain. And I began to declare that. I began to walk as if what I spoke has already happened, even though I'm waiting on the manifestation. And when I do that, the devil can whisper all his own. I tell him like Satan, like Jesus told him, said, away from me, Satan. This is what the word says. I don't need to tempt the Lord that God. God said it in his word and in his time, God will take care of the mouth. We don't put no timetable on the Lord. We just trust and obey and he takes care of the rest. Because when that word is uttered, God can dispatch those angels to go ahead and do what needs to be done. Just as he spoke the word, it said the spirit was hovering. And once it heard that word, that's what it was. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word. So don't feel like you're getting bored and saying the same thing. That's what you're supposed to do. Utter. Over and over so that your spirit, because it's got to fight through this soulless realm. Your way of thinking, because all that stuff you've been taught over the years and been thinking over the years, it ain't going to break through overnight. It's going to take some time. So you keep chipping away at it by continually declaring the word. See, not only did it say that that dagger would cut between the spirit and the soul, it says even the intent of the thoughts. In other words, what you've been thinking about, what you're thinking about, the spirit is so powerful that it's going to cut and separate that. Because you may be thinking about the thing in the wrong way. So the spirit got to cut it or loose so that it's not hindering the spirit from doing what it needs to do and it can change what I'm thinking and how I'm thinking about it so that I can receive the logos, the understanding of that word and then once I get that understanding and I said I've been thinking about it all wrong ain't you never done something I've been going by this thing the wrong way Lord, have mercy. If I'd have known this, I could have changed this thing a long time ago. So you get that understanding. You open your mouth and declare it and begin to walk in it as you declare it. You're training this mind to put that old stuff away and to take on what the Spirit of God says. For His words, they are life and spirit. And I say so many times, this is not an ordinary textbook. But it's living to bring about change. But if you don't do nothing with it, it'll be like any other book you got on the shelf, laying on the table. The sword of the Spirit, saying, is the only offensive weapon that we need. Because the enemy is allergic to the Word of God. We bless the Lord for the Word this morning. And as the choir begins to come back, if you're outside of the family of God, whether you're online or in the house, praise God. The Bible says, by grace are we saved, not by works, lest anybody can boast. It's our faith in the completed work that was already done by Jesus. 
not my action, not what I'm doing. But if I receive that gift of salvation by faith, his grace will save me. But see, the world and unfortunately a lot of churches made you feel like or make us think that we had to work and we had to be good at good at in order to be saved. But the Bible says it's by God's grace. So when we turn our heart and trust Him for our salvation and put our faith in His Word and the work that was done, we are saved. Now it's going to take a process to get the body and the soul in line. But if you get the soul, our emotions, our way of thinking, our personality in line with God's word, then the body will fall in place. Because our body, we don't do nothing until the body, our mind speaks to the body, the brain sends the signal, they sit down, stand up. It's got to send the signal first. And that comes from the brain. So when we get that part right with the word of God, when we speak the word of God, the body going to line up. But it's a process, and while you're going through the process, it does not take away from the fact that you are a believer, you're a part of God's family, but you are growing to maturity. No baby walks fully the first time. They got to grow. They, they learn, and they walk, and they fall, and they get up, but the next time they walk a little further before they fall. And they keep happening until they grow up in maturity where they're able to walk without fault. The same analogy in the spirit realm. As we start out walking according to God's word. And as we learn, we're able to move to the next level and begin to mature. But if we don't do anything with it, we'll stay in that baby stage and we'll never mature. That's why you got 50 year olds, 60 year olds, still got the mind of a child. But they ain't developing. They ain't do nothing with it. So if there is one, and you ask God to forgive you, and they receive the gift of salvation, you will be a part of God's family. Because that's all done by faith. And I thank God so much that it is by faith. That I don't have to walk to try to please somebody else but the one that called me which is Jesus Christ walking by faith because we each answer for ourselves so it ain't what somebody said about me or what they think about me mm -hmm. it's what Jesus yeah. said that's right and when I understand what his word says I'm not alone that's right for he would never leave me nor forsake me. And if he's with you, he's more than 10 other folks with you that yeah. just only with you for what they can get. And until you go against them and then they all walk away. But Jesus won't walk away from us once we're part of him. We might step away from him, but even at that, he's reaching out to bring you back. Ain't have a better friend. Praise God. Bless the Lord. And if there's not one, praise God. We're getting ready to prepare to go into our altar prayer. If you have a prayer request, whether it's for yourself or someone else, let it be made known. And we're going to go before the Lord. Praise God in prayer by faith. Praise God because the word said, let your request be made known. But when we give that request to the Lord, we'll trust in Him. And when we give it to Him, we got to be willing to let our request line up with His will. But He did ask us to make it known. Not that He don't already know, but again, our sword is the utterance or the declaration of the Word of God. Yeah. That's the means in which He set it in place. For us to receive or to walk in our victory. We already have it. Mm -hmm. But if you got victory and don't know it, 
you're still trying to get it. That's right. We got it. We just got to walk in. Mm -hmm. And so that's why he says, let your request be made known. But he already know what we need. But we are told, so out of obedience to that word, we're going to let our request be made known. Mm -hmm. And when you make that request, it's by faith. And so if you believe God going to do it, you just continue to praise him and thank him. Mm -hmm. And when the enemy says, ain't nothing happening, you can say, might not see it, but that's what God's word said. And the word said it would, so it's in the word. Because I trust God. Amen. Praise God. Any other requests, let them be made known. The Lord don't get confused. Everybody can say the request at one time. He got all of them. Robert, Maya. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for being Lord and Savior. Father, we appreciate you so very much, not only for what you do, but for who you are. Make your word there right by yourself. So you are high and lifted up, far exalted above all gods. And besides thee, there is none other, for you are the true and living Savior. And we thank you for that right now. We thank you for being a part of your family. God, we appreciate you for all that you have done, yet doing, and all that you're about to do. And according to your word, we have let our requests be made known unto you. And Father, as we have given you those requests, our trust is in you. And we understand that you are God of eternity and we are a people of time. But because we trust, you know what's best and you can see beyond what we can see. So God, we align our request with your will. Do what you will as you will with that request. But nevertheless, out of obedience, I have made it known. But my trust is in you. And because I trust you, I know that you will act and move yes. according to what you desire, which will be better for me in the long haul. It's not based on what I can see, but it's based on what you can say and what you have spoken. And I trust that. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you, Lord, that you will minister to each and every request by your spirit. And God, while you're ministering to that request, we thank you, Lord, that hope and faith will be combined, Lord, and that we will look unto you, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Knowing that you're working by your spirit and that God you will honor your word but while you're honoring your word let us continue to give your name the praise all the glory and the honor because your word says let everything that has breath praise you the Lord so God let us praise as we should let us magnify your name, Lord. Let us encourage one another. God, for we are family. And we thank you, Lord, that we help each other. For God, you have placed each and every one of us in a specific capacity. And in that role that we are walking into, let us perform it as unto you. Let you move through us that we might let your glory be seen among this unsaved world. Those that are outside of God's name, but let them experience your love. For while we were yet sinners, you died for us. You shed your blood. Because you loved us just that much. Let them recognize and understand 
that it's your will that none should perish, but that all will come into repentance unto everlasting life. For God, your love is for the sin of man because you don't want them to be lost. And we as your children, we need to learn to love as you love and allow your spirit to work through us that we may minister as you direct. Whether it's just a smile, whether it's a hug or a handshake, whatever it may be, let us yield to your spirit and let that love be exemplified among those that we walk upon. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for doing what you will as you will. We take nothing for granted, but we thank you for the small things as well as for the large things. And through it all, God, we know that you are with us, for you will never leave us nor forsake us. God, even when it seems like in the natural, we can't feel you. We need to know by faith that you're right there because your word said so. And we, as children of the faith, we are called to walk by faith and not by sight because that that you have spoken, you're able to accomplish. And we believe it. We receive it. And because we received it, we're going to walk according to it. And we thank you for having your way. We give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor. And we thank you that our families are covered, our loved ones are covered, while your spirit is yet drawn. And we thank you that the eyes will be open and the ears will be unstopped that they will receive and hear the word of God. And as that logo, that understanding comes into play, the turn will be made, that they will receive the gift of salvation that you're offering. And to know that once their confidence, their faith has been placed in you, they're part of that family, and then they go through the process of maturing in the spirit. Thank you for that continued guidance. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare that it is so. And we give thy name the praise, the glory, and the honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory be to thy name. It is so in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.